What up, what up, what up? Welcome into week four's college football. Going to give you guys six games today and a bonus parlay at the end. So stay tuned to Breaking the Huddle. We're trying to get out there, beat them bookies with the early looks, giving you guys the best opportunity to capture line movement, incorporate trends, talk about cash flow splits and everything we do to cash more winning tickets. Let's get right to it. As I said, we got six games to get through. Bonus parlay at the end. Let's start off with a little maxion, little Buffalo Bulls and the Northern Illinois Huskies. Here we see that this line opened up as the Huskies, pretty firm favorite at minus 13 and a half points. However, the action has been coming in on this Buffalo side. As I say it here, it just down ticked a little bit more money now coming in public wise on Northern Illinois. 59% of the bets and 90% of the cash on these Buffalo Bulls. Could that be an overreaction spot? We look at the Northern Illinois side. This total has dropped down to 43 from a 45. And 58% of the bets, 91% of the cash on this under. As we look at this game, I love the sandwich spot here. We've got a couple of big factors going on. First and foremost, Northern Illinois coming off of probably their biggest win in program history. You take down North the Notre Dame in Notre Dame. And you went out right 16, 14, getting 28 points. Unbelievable spot there. And then they have to go into a little by other side of things. You know, Buffalo has not had the easiest time. They start off their schedule with Lafayette. They got to go play Mizzou. They get busted up. It's 38-0. It's ugly as can be. Then they roll back against a UMass team and they beat them up 34 to 3 at home. Now traveling into this northern Illinois territory. And you know, I mentioned this one and starting off this way here because I think we got a nice little sandwich spot. If you look at the schedule for the uh, Huskies here, next up, after this week, they got themselves a little NC State ACC battle. That would certainly be a way for them to plant the flag saying we are deserved of one of those expanded playoff spots, but not so fast here. A couple of things happening with Buffalo, and I think they've really started to kind of catch some stride. I was blown away with that mass performance, not just because of the the win, but just the way that they did it from start to finish, no look back. They got a new head coach in Pete Lembo this year. Um, you know, certainly has experience through the Mac. Definitely an upgrade across their program. Their quarterback, okay, CJ Obama, o- o- I believe is how you say that. Um, okay, better. Certainly, certainly from a size perspective, they've got some work to do to rebuild this program. But I think this is a little sleepy spot for this Northern Illinois team. You put them on ice after beating up Notre Dame. They got NC State coming into the house next. We see that, okay, they have home field. Is that a tremendous advantage in the MAC? No. Those teams are winning at just a 45% rate. We look at Northern Illinois when they are in the favorite role. They are fade spots. They're 4-16 and under Thomas Hammock as the head coach out there. That's just a 20% win rate. One in five as favorites of more than a touchdown, which is where we see them at here with this game at 13 and a half. I'll tell you, big favorites in the first 10 games of college football, the first 10 games of the season, home favorites between a minus 10 and a minus 28 are just 24 and 66. This game falls right into that trap spot. We've got the bonus sides, the boot. And last but not least, we know this is a battle. NIU has traditionally dominated these bulls. Nine in one head to head their last 10 games, but those games majority of the time come at the end of the season. This is an early spot in the season, early opportunity for Buffalo to go out there, make a statement. Maybe they play the old upset alert. They're not quite there to take over the Mac, but we know that NIU uh, could certainly be poised for a little bit of a beatdown. Gonna go in there. I'm gonna take this Buffalo side of things. I'm gonna take them at plus 13 and a half to open up our betting card. We'll take them points. Let's get them bulls. Let's move into game number two for the breaking the huddle six pack today we've got another 3 30 p.m eastern start here we're looking at the memphis tigers and the navy midshipmen we had a line that opened up at 11 and has taken some early steam we see 79 percent of the bets and 75 percent of the cash on the memphis tigers and yet we've got a little reverse line movement and a total that is continuing to drop open at 50 and a half all the way down to 49 57% of the bets and 76% of the cash on this under. And that's a correlated line movement. 
you know, we've got two unbeaten teams here in 3-0 and Memphis, 2-0 and Navy. Probably the tail of the tape for this one is, you know, <laughs> who the heck has Navy played? Uh, you know, Temple, okay, they busted Temple in the mouth. You guys know Temple is awful. We'll talk about them when we get to the parlay segment of the show. 38-11, to 11, they busted them up. Then they get a bye week. And I think the difference here is, you know, Navy's trying to implement new offensive coordinator game plans, new coaching programs out there. And they're trying to kind of complement that, um, you know, that uh, triple option offense that's run out there. So coming into this one with a little bit of buy action under their belts, and we've got a team in Memphis who just had a big upset on the road against Florida State. Now, it's not the same Florida State that we expected or that we saw at the end of last season, but you can only play who's in front of you. You know Florida State was trying to get right in that game, and Memphis was just too much for that team. They overpowered him and won that game outright 20-12. to 12. Getting six and a half points as a dog. I think we'll see what really happens in this game early. You know, the big thing when I looked at this was um, not a sandwich spot. Both these teams are going to give you everything they've got. They're kind of right in the meat of the schedule, but it's definitely a step up in competition for Navy. Thing is, when you look at Navy, best underdog in college football, going all the way back to 2005, they just find a way to continually surprise teams. And they're 65, 41, and four in that dog roll. Navy's catching 14 or more points. They're winning at a 60% rate. You know, general rule of thumb, you don't beat up service academies. But maybe they can beat you up here. Navy looking to be angry, looking to be hungry in this game here, representing home field. Should be loud. It should be exciting. This is a big game coming in, and it's going to be a nationally televised game at the CBS Sports Network. I just think this is too many points. Yeah, we see this 11 has dropped to 9.5. I think you catch that now. Might kick down to 9 or even 8.5 by the time the game starts. But official play number two. We're going to take the midshipmen. We're going to take them points. I don't believe that they're a live dog in this spot, but why not? Let's go service academy. Let's get Navy plus nine and a half points. And let's see if we can get to the bank. Game number three brings us a battle between the Utah Utes, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, and a flip-flop in the line. The Oklahoma State Cowboys opened up as a two-point home dog. Now we see a flip-flop to minus two and a half. 78% of the bets believe in these Oak State Cowboys but only 54% of the cash. So some, some bigger bets potentially coming in on this Utah side of things. And, you know, this total's dropped as well from 53 and a half, now down to 52 and a half. Lots of cash coming in, 62% of the bets and 70% of the cash on the over, almost a 14,000 ticket count. So considerable number coming in on the over, but I believe some of these numbers are skewed simply based on injury factors. As we look at this, you know, Utah team, just reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, granted, early, early unfortunate snafus, but, you know, we saw last year with USC, the constant injuries with their big players and, you know, Caleb Williams on and off the injury report kind of feels a little bit like Cam Rising might be falling into that situation. Is he playing? Isn't he playing? I don't like the situation they've got set up as well with the running back game when it comes to the youths here. You know, you got Mike Mitchell's that red shirt running back coming in there. Uh, he's another guy. Is he hurt or can he truly be the number two? Micah Bernard's the go-to guy. And then they've got Dijon Stanley as that change of pace back. There's just too much movement for me in the backfield of those situations. Now, um, you know, home favorites in ranked games like we see here are holding a decided advantage back to 2015. They're up 298 to 219. I think you couple that in there and, uh, you know, who is it going to be that's playing out there on this Utah offensive side of things? Now, not a good look coming off of a barn burning there. Oak State got defensively roasted by Arkansas, giving up 650 yards, but they can pass. They can pass that ball. They can chuck it around the yard. And if they're going to get there and they need to cover, they need to come back late in the game. Those are the angles I want to take advantage of when a team's got a quarterback that can complete passes. Then we look back at this thing and we see, you know, furthermore, uh, when we see that Oklahoma State opens up, now granted they were a home dog and have flip-flopped the favorites, but they've played quite well in those positions now. So all I'm thinking about with this game is I just need to go out there and win this game. I don't care how they do it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care. Frankly, you know, this line movement tells me there's going to be quite a few injuries on this Utah side as expected. And I think that's going to give us a nice little opportunity here for them. Oak state Cowboys. I think they can go out there and fire. I think Utah state's going to fall flat. You know, they're only one and two against the spread this year. And a reversal of line back to now a favorite for this Oak State Cowboys team. Good enough for me. Let's get this one to the bank. 
Get into some evening action here with Breaking the Huddle. We've got a 7.30 p.m. Big Ten battle. And maybe the theme of the week here is scheduling spots. We see Iowa Hawkeyes, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, going to go out there and battle. You guys have heard me talk about this before. Uh, don't like the system. I don't like that flex bank process that's out there uh, with this Minnesota team, but can't argue with results. Last week I was looking at Nevada plus 17 and a half points. They go out there and they get shut out. It was uh, it was embarrassing. It only counts as one loss, but man, it felt like quite a few out there. And I think that the situation here is, you know, changes in programs. We've seen Iowa just continue to roll the unders last season. I think they ended the season with nine straight unders. They changed their coaches. They improved their defense. They make all kinds of moves, bringing over the Michigan quarterback after Harbaugh, Harbaugh gets out of town. Change, 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 change. And I think the key piece there is it's a bad offense. You know, yeah, they put up 38 points against Troy, but Iowa State, the big battle between these two teams, you know, we see this game. They only come up with 19 points, take that loss. Minnesota, on the other hand, look, that's a defensive-oriented program. We saw them put it on put it on alert, put teams on notice here. Back-to-back -back shutouts for this Minnesota Gophers team. Granted, one of them's against Rhode Island at 48-0, to zero, but – Got ourselves a couple big under trends as well when we look at this one. You know, Iowa, I think, has transformed into that more of a, they're more of that running team. Uh, four and one to the under the last five times these two teams have played head to head. And that's why we see a low number. They're low numbers for a reason. You know, favorites that are 35 and a half or less are 17 and three in favor of the under. The margin is key on that thing. It's almost a full touchdown. And when I talk about scheduling spots, both these teams have huge games on deck. Minnesota, got to go out there and take care of the defending national champions in Michigan. Iowa's got to go out there and deal with the Ryan Day, who's on the hot seat in, in uh, Ohio State. I think coupled that with this series of unders between these two teams, there's no reason not to get involved. Drop in there. Take that under 35 and a half. Don't be scared of that low number. It's low for a reason. And I think it's plenty good enough for us to get paid. We move along to another 7.30 p.m. start. This is going to be maybe the game of the night. Tennessee Volunteers going on the road. The Oklahoma Sooners, welcome to the SEC Oklahoma. This should be a battle. This is going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Both these teams coming in at 3-0. and And you got a night game sitting down there at Oklahoma to bring in this SEC competition. That's going to be a ton of excitement in itself. I think that we got kind of the, the, the changing of the guard here. When it comes to this Oklahoma team, Maybe not changing of the guard, but uh, players coming back. You know, we're looking at the secondary for Oklahoma. Should be as healthy as it's been all year, which is going to be super important when it comes to Tennessee. Uh, you know, certainly we've seen what Tennessee can do out there. They're just bludgeoning teams right now. You know, you look at recent performances. Uh, yeah, 71-0 to zero against Kent State. 51-10 against NC State. 69-3 against Chattanooga, but... Step up in class and everything to play for for Oklahoma as they move into this new conference. Uh, Going to need all hands on deck to get ready out there. Uh, you know, when you look at kind of the size and the battle between this thing here, yeah, Tennessee definitely has that great passing attack. Their front seven can go out there and lock anybody down, but it's a lot of points for a home team at night and the biggest game that their program has seen probably since the Red River rivalry. Now we're looking at a situation where we've got an un- defeated trend in our corner teams that have between three and nine wins on the season and home dogs shouldn't be home dogs. They're 15. Oh, and one their average margin of victory 11, the average line we're seeing on those games, six and a half. This one falls right into that dynamic. Do I think they go out there and win this game? It'd be fun if they do. Uh, I don't expect that, but the big thing for me with this one here, yeah, it's a big rank battle in number six versus number 15. Huge opportunity. Now, can Tennessee's untested road quarterback step up to the battle with a healthy secondary that Oklahoma brings to the table? I think it's going to be just a few too many points to get it done. Tennessee wins this game, but man, at seven and a half points hanging out there at FanDuel, got to get that seven with the hook. I think this is going to be a tight game. You know, maybe it's three, four points when it comes down to it. It's a it's a missed field goal or something crazy that pushes this one out of the realm of an outright W. But I'm going to take them points with Oklahoma. A lot to play for. A lot of unproven spots with Tennessee, despite their powerhouse prowess. to go with his Oklahoma Sooners.
Last game on the card, then we'll get you to the show parlay. Going to look at this Kansas State Wildcats, BYU Cougars, 10.30 p.m. makes it the late night special. Hopefully they shine the light on us as we look at this battle right now. We see this line opened up with K-State as a big road favorite at minus seven and a half points. A lot of people have K-State to be a national champion contender. 70% of the bets and 72% of the cash believe in this Kansas State side of things. What have the books done? They've made it more attractive to bet K-State. I got to tell you, I was almost there with the trigger. We look at the total, 50 and a half, dropping. 49s, 48 and a halfs, all the way down to 47 and a halfs in some books as well. We have 55% of the bets and 73% of the cash on this under. And I looked at this game. I'll tell you, there was a couple different spots I wanted to jump into. I found some incredible narratives here when you look at, you know, teams with no rest coming out of Wyoming. We know Wyoming sits at over 7,000 feet in elevation. Don't do well that next game. They're 18 and 38 against the spread in those spots. And I was looking at it and I saw, well, you know, complicating things a little bit more when BYU's that home dog, they are five and one. The spot that I had to look to though is coupling the strategy with these teams here. K-State, very much a running team. They're averaging over six yards a carry, uh, averaging 244 rushing yards per game. That leads to the clock moving, folks. We look at this, and it's not the NFL, it's college football. But boy, oh boy, the late night games have been under fests. If you're looking for scoring, you better not watch them 1030 or midnight games out there. In fact, eight games in week two kicked off in that late night spot. Six of them had gone under the total. Both of them last weekend go under the total. And I think this is a great spot when you look at these teams, a potentially sleepy situation for BYU coming out of that elevation. You got a Kansas State team that likes to run it, should win as the favorite. Favorites lead to unders. And I think it's a great opportunity for this under 48 and a half. You better get this one while it's hot because it's not going to be there all weekend long. That's why we do this for you guys here. Let's get into the parlay pick of the show here. It's going to be a little fun. It's a little sprinkle, sprinkle. Let's see what we can do with this act. Not for the faint of heart. Here's a little fun seven-legger to get involved with. I told you guys earlier um you know we'll go right by the playbook here and thank you for sticking around to the end make sure you hit that thumbs up button uh show the support if you appreciate the video if you want to see more of this if you want more games broken down uh we can get the crew to put the time and research in for you guys but i'm fading temple i'm taking utah state on the money line in that spot there there's a huge trend to this under in michigan and usc and i think the changing of the guard for michigan is going to really lead to a situation of can they score points we know usc was a big over team last season, uh, or at least the trends would indicate that. I mentioned that Caleb Williams in and out of the lineup could never seem to quite get those totals right. USC starting to play some defense as well. Love that under 47. But take the hogs. Give me the plus three out there. I don't care about Auburn. This ain't the Iron Bowl. This is Arkansas. Going to get in the mud with the pigs. We're going to take the under in Penn State University at 55 and a half. Uh, widely reported steam. Shout out to our guy Ramon Scott involved in that with the morning steam sharing that information with us. There's going to be some key injuries for Penn State on defense. Um, and I think this is a game where they got to ground and pound, just run that clock. Uh, it's a big number for a reason. Uh, and I think it's all one-sided Penn State affair. I'm going to go to Wyoming. I got to take them Cowboys plus seven. Yeah, I wasn't excited to watch them get busted up 34-14 against BYU, but it was BYU. And I think that they've got the opportunity to come back here. Yes, they're 0-3 against the spread. It puts us right in a trigger spot where we take a team that can't quite get the Vegas number right. Now they're dropping a tutty on there for us. And uh, I'm going to take advantage. This line is starting to come down, so you're going to want to get that one early. I'm looking at Arizona State. I got the under 62. This one's a weather effect. We've got wind expected in this game. Now you're going to want to check this out as we get closer to game time or a couple days out. But there's going to be gust upwards of 32 miles per hour in that Arizona State game. The average sustainable wind will be between 13 and 34 miles an hour. And what happens in those games with young men out there trying to throw the ball around the field? Lots of incomplete passes. Lots of ugly football. And it's 688 to 505 in favor of the under. I'm going to go with the under in that wind battle out there with Arizona State. Last but not least. I'm going to go to Notre Dame. I'm going to go to the over. Yeah, you know what? I'm not a huge Notre Dame fan. You guys know that and then some. But, man, after a blowout, they keep cruising. 30 
plus point wins. They are 8-0 and o to the over. In fact, teams that are unders going into game three with low totals are 38 and 24 to the over. The average line at 41. Bought this one down to 39, but it gives us almost a 38 to 1 parlay. Little sprinkle. Go have some fun with it. I hope you guys have a great college football Saturday. Thanks for checking out the show. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Share in the comments your favorite plays for the weekend. Look forward to getting that cash with you guys.